ago, I went to I went to a church in Boston, and I was praying, and I asked people who needed jobs to come forward for prayer. So many people came forward for prayer for job. And after the service, the gentleman that drove me to church in my hotel was a Ghanaian, very blessed and prosperous. In the car going back to my hotel, I said to him, why don't you help some of these individuals who need jobs in the church? He said, Papa. He said, you know, years ago I made a big mistake. I helped a lot of the Ghanaians in the church. I gave them a job where I worked and I showed them how other nationals are rising in the ranks like Nigerians and others. They were really making it. And I showed them how they can break through the system and get to the top. And he says some of the Ghanaians went up to the CEO and reported and told the CEO everything I told them and I almost lost my job. So he said from that time I made up my mind that when it comes to my people I will never get anyone a job where I work but I'll give them money but I won't help them. I was in Amsterdam some years ago and a Nigerian lady was cleaning the street. And she said, Archbishop, pray for your Ghanaians, so pray for your people. And I said, what is the problem? And she said, some Ghanaians used to work here where she worked, and they fought among themselves, it was a fight. And some of the Ghanaians went to report to the authorities that a lot of the Ghanaians who worked there didn't have legal documents, that they were illegal. And the authorities came there and arrested all the Ghanaians and deported every ba everyone back to Ghana. I was in Singapore some years ago and there was this Ghanaian professor. He invited me to his house. And uh, I asked him, how are the Ghanaians doing here? I care for my people a lot. And he said, well, I really don't know. Uh, because I don't get involved with the Ghanaians. And I said, why? He said, listen, Archbishop, if any of the Ghanaians in the community gets to know how blessed I am, where I live, I will lose my job. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you know, my pe our people, they will undermine you. They are into pulling down themselves, celebrating foreigners, have self-hated for themselves. So I don't want any Ghanaian to know where I live, and what I do, and I don't get involved with them. And as I meditate and reflect over the years, I've come to realize that Ghanaians are good people. We are great people. But it's ignorance that is killing us. A lot of us don't know what we are capable of and what we have. But if we just begin to realize that everyone is blessed with something, and whenever you think about what you don't have, always think about what you have. And whenever you are looking at others and you admire them, remember and realize that you have something the people you admire don't have. Are you hearing me, somebody? You just got to come to that understanding. And when you begin to understand that you have something others don't have and you have something someone needs, then you don't have to be looking at what others have. You don't have to be jealous nor envious of what anybody has because everybody is giving something. Amen. But hear me, whether you are going to remain where you are or you are going to rise in the ranks or you are going to go to the top or you will go forward has everything to do with one, realizing what you have. Two, what you do with what you have. Three, you have to improve on what you have. But you can't improve on what you have if you don't know what you have. You got something. Come with me. Let's begin our journey. I just want to talk to everybody. So when you live here today, wherever you go, whoever you are, realize that you got something. That nobody, hear me, anyone, anyone in this life that makes a difference in the life of someone else is not useless. Anyone that can help somebody, bless somebody, make an input into the life of somebody is not useless. 
Everyone have something. And you have something. Stop looking at what others have. Stop looking at what others are achieving. Concentrate on what you have. Focus on what you have. Improve on what you have. And what you have will bring you what you don't have. Come on somebody, put your hands together and give God praise. I have learned not to worry about what anyone has. Because you see, what I have, what I have distinguishes me from others. What I have makes me outstanding. What I have gives me the upper hand in life. I don't care what you have. And I don't care if you move mountains. Move your mountains and I will move mine. Are you hearing me somebody? Say yes. You got to stop admiring what others have and begin to appreciate what you have. Begin to celebrate what you have. Because if you don't celebrate what you have, especially in this society, Ghana, nobody is going to celebrate you or what you have. Say yes. Thank God for what you have. Celebrate what you have. Focus on what you have. Improve on what you have. Use what you have. Stop using what others have. You see, if you look at this society, we produce cocoa. La Côte d'Ivoire produces cocoa. The other day I saw on the net, La Côte d'Ivoire in Ghana makes about five to seven billion dollars a year if the calculations is right. And nations that take our cocoa and give us value for the cocoa, who don't produce cocoa, they make $150 million a year, and we make how much? Billions. $150 billion a year, and we make five to seven billion out of that. Just think. We have not learned to place value on what we have. And until we learn how to place value on what we have, we will always be disadvantaged. Africa is not broke. Africa is not poor. But Africa lack understanding of what we are capable of and what we have and the difference we can make. We are always looking at things that come from foreign nations and lands but we got something here we have something to offer come with me to first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 11 look at something here about the manifestation but the manifestation of the, of the spirit is given to each one for the profit it's given of all to one it's given to one but what each, each one. one say that includes you tell to somebody that includes you each one means you. It includes you. Go ahead. For the profit of all. For the profit of all. So whatever we have is for the benefit of others. And I think that if we will start changing our mindset, our thought pattern, our psyche, and the way we think and see things, that whatever I have and possess is not for my benefit. It's for the benefit and the good of others. Whether is at the marketplace or on the political scene or in the church that is never about you and I but it's always about others it's about country it's about posterity it is said by the Greek philosophers that in every society there are three kinds of people number one we have this group of individuals in every society that are very educated brilliant exposed <clears throat> And have substance but are self-centered and it's all about them and the immediate family they never think about anyone else but themselves it is said that such individuals will never be remembered by history number two there's another group of people in every society and for them they live for self tribe and political party everything about them is their tribe themselves the immediate family and their political party they will kill throw you under the bus do anything for their tribe themselves and their political party that's it 
such individuals will never be remembered by history when history is told their names will not be mentioned and it will never be said that they lived or they came into this world the third group of people are individuals who for them is about God and country and it's not about their tribe it's not about their political party it's not about them as an individual it's always about God and country it's about others what can I do to be a blessing what can I do to touch to bless others we need generational thinkers people who don't live for themselves but they live for the benefit of country and others you know why we all travel and we go to the West why is everybody going to Dubai now 30 years ago a man had a dream that I would turn this desert into a city where nations will come and spend their money here I have a dream that in his lifetime he would turn the desert into a first class 21st century city today everybody goes to Dubai to spend money the fathers of Europe made sacrifices in their days and in their time for their kids for their children and unless we become generational thinkers to think of tomorrow and to think beyond ourselves and to think of our children and our grandchildren to create an environment that is conducive for creativity and productivity and stability an environment that allows for our children giftings and abilities and capacity to be developed that they don't have to go anywhere to be developed whether it is education or whether it's at the marketplace or politics that they are not educated anymore out there but we can educate our children in the light of our own culture and tradition and raise up leaders who are not influenced by the doctrines of others but influenced and brought out by the principles of our culture by the principles of our own country we will have all the mineral resources you can think of and still be disadvantaged Africa is not broke we are not poor but we lack we lack selfless people. We lack visionary people. We don't have selfless people. In the six days we did, like the Kwame Nkrumahs, who said, Ghana, Ghana, you are free forever. But the independence of Ghana is meaningless until it is connected to the total freedom of the continent of Africa. Where are the leaders like the Kwame Nkrumahs who built the motorway across from both down and think of the things he did for the benefit of others and not for himself? Where are the leaders like the Kwame Nkrumahs, the leaders we have in the 60s? We need generational thinkers. We need men and women who will stop thinking of themselves and begin to think of our children and our grandchildren and create a Ghana, an environment, a community that doesn't kill and destroy and hate one another, but a community, a people that care and love one another and builds one another and celebrate one another not a society that kills a vindictive society that goes out of our way to pull down destroy one another years ago there was a couple in my church the daughter had a scholarship to go to school in the UK and they have paid everything but they didn't have money to buy a ticket so they came to see me and asked me to pray there was a couple in the church they have this business a travel agent business I was on the board so I consulted them and I asked them if it is possible for them to arrange a ticket for this family for the daughter to go to school and I'll pay if they give me some time to work it out so they did and this couple had a meeting somewhere I didn't know where it was and there was a group of people attacking me you know saying all kinds of crazy things like we do and I've learned to outgrown that so it doesn't really bother me if people don't talk about you it's because you are nothing and you're not going anywhere are you hearing me when you see people throwing stone at a tree it's only because there are fruits on it there are fruits on it you never see anybody talking about a madman on the street you know, nobody talks about a madman on the street. So if people don't talk about this because you are not going anywhere. When people start talking about this, it, an indication that you got something and you're going somewhere. Say yes. So anyway, 
Some people were saying some things about me, and this couple decided to defend me. And in defending me, they said, listen, he's a good man. He even arranged a ticket for our daughter to go to school. And then one of them said, hey, he has money to arrange a ticket for your daughter to go to school. He must be investigated. Yeah, and they started investigating me. That's the society we live in. So when people are even blessed and are in the position to do something for others, they are afraid. They are afraid because as soon as they reach out to help and to do something, immediately eyes and attention comes on them and people will begin. I tell my children, I say, son, let me, hear, let me tell you something, kids. I said, this society operates under the radar. I said, even when you have, act like you don't have it. Because this society, as soon as they begin to see that you have something, they come after you. They come after you because people haven't learned and they haven't understood the fact that they also have something. And you don't have to look at what somebody has. Everybody has something. I don't care what you think, but you got something. You got something. And until we grow up and become a people who understand and acknowledge the fact of what we have, until we discover, listen, you cannot recover unless you discover. Are you hearing me, somebody? Tell somebody, discover, discover. Discover what is in you. Discover what you have. You have something. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I've been, I've been writing books these days. Crazy. The inspiration just comes and I write. I'm working on a book right now entitled The Eight Kinds of Marriages. The eight different types and kinds of marriages. It will come out soon. And another one. Five men, no woman must marry. And five women, no man must marry. I won't give it to you now. Yeah. The fact that somebody speaks in tongues doesn't mean... You should marry them. You must know what to marry and what not to marry. He that finds a wife, not a woman. So you don't marry a woman. You marry a wife. For this cause shall a man. So you don't marry a boy. You marry a man. Boys marry for looks and sex. Men marry for purpose and companionship. Yes. Say yes. yes. Men are providers and women are helpers. But a lot of women are marrying providers. A lot of women are not marrying right. Because you see the role of the man is to be a provider, not a helper. But a lot of women today are providers. And when a woman becomes a provider and not a helper, the marriage is in trouble. It's just a matter of time. Because women were never designed to be providers. They were designed to be helpmeet, not providers. The man is a provider and the woman is a helpmeet. Let's go ahead. Verse for, eight. Uh -huh. for to one is given the, the word of wisdom. To what? To, to one. one. Uh -huh. Is given the word is of wisdom. Is given the word of wisdom uh -huh. through the spirit. Uh -huh. To another, the to word what? of knowledge. And not that. So no one has it all. The thing is distributed as he wills. Everybody has something. Say yes. Yes. To one is given the word of wisdom and to another turn to someone and say you are the another you are the another tell somebody you got something you got something go ahead to one the word of knowledge through uh -huh. the same spirit uh -huh. to another faith to another faith by the same spirit and this faith here is a different kind of faith this is not saving faith this is a different kind of faith. This is the gift of faith. 
This gift of faith is, is deposited within your spirit by divine infusion. There is the faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 8, 17. Now therefore faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is the saving faith. It's different from this kind of faith. This is the kind of faith that gives you the audacity to speak to the sun and say, stay where you are and turn to the moon and say, you will not proceed any further until my command. And he stays. That gift is a gift of faith. It's different from saving faith. So don't go praying, God give me faith. No. You don't pray for faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how is faith released? Faith is released by your mouth. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Therein, day and night, through meditation is not leaving your mind blank. You do that, demons will enter. You leave yourself open. True meditation is called matter. And matter means to speak the word of God to yourself over and over and over again with your mouth. So faith comes not by hearing and hearing by the preacher alone, but by hearing and hearing by your own mouth. Confessing the scriptures and the word of God by your own mouth over and over again. And the more you hear the word coming out of your mouth with your ears, it develops and it empowers your faith. Say, I hear you. Go ahead. To another, the gifts of healing. The gifts of healing. By the same spirit. Same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. Workings of miracles. To another, prophecy. Prophecy. To another, descending of spirits. You, you see, he didn't say to another prophet. He said prophecy. So you can have the gift of prophecy and not be a prophet. Because the workings of the gift of prophecy is edification comfort and exaltation that is that is the function of the gift of prophecy so you can have the gift of prophecy you can prophesy unto comfort exaltation and edification and not be a prophet in order for you to be a prophet you need to possess two of the revelational gifts and the gift of prophecy the revelation that gives or the gifts that reveal something is the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirit. Now, the discerning of spirit is not the gift of suspicion. <laughs> discerning of spirit is the eye gate into the spirit well. The discerning of spirit is not something you feel in your heart. You feel some way. That is not discernment. Discerning of spirit has to do with an eye. The eye to see as I'm seeing you in the realm of the spirit, what is operating behind a particular manifestation. And the word of knowledge reveals events of the past and of the present. And the word of wisdom reveals events that are to come. He said the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. So it is, it is something for a particular season and a time. It's not all knowledge or all wisdom. It's the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge so God gives you a word for a particular time season and a situation as it relates to a particular thing so you don't have all the knowledge you don't have all the wisdom in this world is the word of knowledge is the word of wisdom and to stand in the office of a prophet you must possess the gift of prophecy and two of the revelation I gives and one of the dangers years ago I saw a prophet prophesying over a witch and telling the witch that she was a prophetess and, and, and I was laughing and I'll tell you why you see if you're a prophet you have the gift of prophecy you operate in the word of knowledge the word of wisdom and you don't operate in the discerning of spirits you can be fooled by witches and demons because you see, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge does not see into the realms of the spirit. You perceive, you know things. Like I was out of the country some time ago, and I told my security, I said, I need to go pray. 
I can't, I can't cry out in my hotel room. And the Bible said, when my heart is overwhelmed from the ends of the earth, I will cry out, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And I said, I need to scream. I need to cry out. This thing is heavy on my chest. I couldn't hear, I couldn't see, but I knew something was wrong. So I said, take me out. We went into the woods and I began to fire. I began to cry out. And at the point, the, the weight was lifted off my chest. And I said, give me my phone. And I call. I called my daughter. I said, girl, where are you? She said, I'm home. I'm not feeling fine. I said, what's going on? She said, I don't know, daddy. I said, I want you at the hospital right now. He said, daddy, I'm going to be fine. I said, you don't tell me what you're going to do. So I called the sister. And I called Tyson. I called her. I said, get her out to the hospital right now. I called the doctors. I said, I'm sending my daughter. Get the best around. They say, Papa, what's wrong? I said, I don't know, but I know by my spirit. I can't see, I'm not hearing, but I know by the spirit, the indications I'm having that something is wrong. They got her to the hospital. By the time she got there, her body was turning blue and cold. Her oxygen level has dropped to 60. And she had a blood clot that was rising in the whole body. The kidneys were down. The liver was compromised. So I said to the doctors, what are we dealing with? And he said, medically, it's 50-50, so you got to pray, Papa. I said, if it is prayer, then don't worry, I'll pray. I said, you do your job, and I will pray. Are you hearing me, somebody? I didn't see, I didn't hear, but I perceived. I felt in my spirit. I knew something wasn't right. Something wasn't, wasn't adding up. And by the spirit, I knew and perceived what it was about. And there was one of my sons who was very sharp in the prophetic, what we, was with her the day before, and, and never perceived it. Didn't see it. And I called him, and I said, your sister is in trouble. And she said, but I was with her yesterday. I said, go check on her. She's at the hospital. She's in trouble. She got her, she called me, she said, Papa, it's, it, it's not looking good. I said, don't worry. We have the upper hand. We have the upper hand. Somebody say, I hear you. Everybody has something. And I want you to leave here tonight after the anointing service, realizing that you have something. Amen. That nobody is useless. Say, nobody is useless. Say, I am not useless. Say, I got something. <laughs> Sit down for two minutes. Come with me to Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 mm -hmm. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you To what? Every man that is every among man. you Every man When you say every man there is no gender in Christ There is neither male or female in Christ When you say every man it means every woman Go ahead Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think uh -huh. But to think soberly, uh -huh. according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Tell somebody, you have a measure of faith. You do. You have a measure of faith. I hear people say, well, I don't have faith. And I don't have the gift of faith. It's not true. You got, you got faith. Tell somebody, I have faith. But it's a measure. That's it. So that's where the issue, whether your faith is going to stay small or big. Or great has everything to do with you. First of all, acknowledging the fact that you got a measure of faith. And if you stop your fears and your doubt and quench the fiery darts of the enemy that comes into your mind every now and then for you to doubt the scriptures and realize and come to the awareness that you have a measure of faith and it is what you do with the measure of faith that determines what your faith becomes in the law feed your faith and stab your doubt tell somebody feed your faith, feed your faith. stab your fears stab your, your doubt say yes yes you have what a measure of faith tell somebody i got faith i got faith i got faith i have faith but it's a measure. Do la kuta does it. De leki tu kadan bivalanda wahasalin mileki tu kuwahadan bivan tu kun bivagazan lega dum wakasala hatisias. Sit down for two minutes. You got faith. Tell somebody I got faith. Come with me to Matthew 
25 and 15. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. You see, to one he gave what? Five. To another he gave what? Two. And to another he gave one. According to what? There are several abilities. You know what the problem is? We always think that we deserve more than what we have. I was telling the young generation the other day, next gen, and I was saying to them that in life, I realized that money, fame, and success and relevance comes in waves. And what becomes of you after the first wave has everything to do with what you do with the wave. The first wave, how you manage and handle it will determine the measure of the second wave that comes. I see a lot of people in the church, at the marketplace, in, in the political scene, they change their status in life based on the waves that comes to them. For instance, if you have a million dollars and you go buy a car, the second wave is undermined and sabotage. If you have a million dollars and you move from where you live to go stay in another area where you haven't developed capacity to stay there, you've changed your status in life. You have obtained a certain lifestyle and you don't have what it takes to maintain that lifestyle. So it's a matter of time you steal. You will steal because you cannot change your status in life by a million dollars. You can only change your status in life by the profit you make on the million dollars and not by the million dollars. Because the million dollars, which is the first wave, is a seed. It's a seed. It's not your fruit. It's not your food. It's a seed. I was telling one of my sons the other day, I said, I don't buy new cars anymore. I don't buy new cars. It's a waste of money. Because cars don't appreciate They do what? They depreciate. So if I go buy a car of $100,000, as soon as it leaves the garage, my money is melting. Are you hearing me? When I moved to the Sprinters Road, they were giving me an acre of land in those days for $1,000 and I won't buy it. Why? I didn't know the value of money at that time. And I'll go to a shop in Los Angeles and I'll buy $20,000 suit. One suit for a thousand dollars, and a shirt for two hundred dollars, and a shoe. And I love dressing. Thirty years after, I realized if I had spent thirty thousand dollars, I would have had thirty acres of land on the spring test road. Do you know how much an acre of land is going right now? Four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And ask me where are all those suits I bought? I can't find them. They've disappeared. Depreciate. The land is there appreciating. Are you hearing me, somebody? So I was telling one of my sons, I said, when you get a hundred thousand dollars, the first thing you do is save the money. Don't touch it. Don't buy a shoe. Don't buy a car. Don't buy anything. Save it. Don't touch it. Give yourself three to six months before you decide what to do with the money. If you get $100,000 today and you don't save it and you don't wait, you will use it wrongly. You say, how did you learn this? Years ago, a friend of mine came to visit me many years ago and he said, Nick, I realize that you need some money. I want to help you. If I give you a million dollars, to pay me back without interest. In two years, what will you do with it? I said, let me think about it. As soon as I said I would think about it, he said, 
you are, you are, you are not ready for a million dollars. So he gave me $100,000 as a gift. And he said, I'm not giving you my million dollars. And I said, what did I do wrong? Then I began to think. I wasn't ready for a million dollars. A lot of you here, you want breakthroughs, but you haven't developed capacity for what you want. Thank you, sir. But right now, if you like, try me. With even $10,000, $10 million, I have a plan for $10 million. Somebody say, I hear you. Tell somebody, make no mistake, make no mistake. This time around, make no mistake. You try me, with $10 million, you vomit it. I will give you a business plan. Are you hearing me, somebody? Of what I will do with $10 million and turn it over. Say yes. Tell somebody you got something. So the Bible said to one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to the other he gave what? One. According to their several word, ability. So the talents were money. It wasn't abilities. He said, according to their several word, ability. So when people talk about talents, talents, they think it's an ability or a skill. No. The talents there was the name of the money they use in those days like the CD or dollars today. But the Bible says, to everyone was given to them a particular amount of money according to their ability to handle and to manage it. So let me say this to you. Whatever you have in life today and wherever you are today is what your ability can manage. If you improve on what you have, you can have more. Are you hearing me? Now, you know what the problem is with us? Instead of us to improve on what we have, we are rather undermining others like Ken. Ken was jealous and envious of his brother Abel and went out of his way to kill and slay his brother in cold blood because he was jealous of the brother's acceptance of God. And that is what is destroying this society. Instead of everybody to focus on what we have, we go around undermining others, blaming others for what we don't have. I am not the reason why you are where you are. I'm not the reason. Dulaki assumed. Felan kuantisum deliki tum kadahalasa. I am not the reason why you lack what you lack. You are your own problem. You are your own enemy. Your inability to discover and to acknowledge what you have is the reason why you don't have more. So stop blaming me. Stop seeing me as the reason why you don't have what you have. Because if you, if you can acknowledge what you have, it will bring you what you don't have. The man that had five talents, the Bible said he made use of it. Tell somebody, make use of what you have. Make use of what you have. That's the problem. He made use of what he had, and he had extra what? Five. So he developed ability to handle ten. He began with five. He ended up with what? Ten. Then the one that had two, made use of the two, he ended up with what? Double. And the one that had one did what? Buried it. Tell somebody, don't bury what you have. Don't bury what you have. And you know how? You know how we are burying what we have in this society? We are burying what we have because we don't concentrate on what we have. We think what we have is of no value. That's why everybody ran into politics. Everybody ran to what comes easy. And nobody wants to build. We don't have business entrepreneurs anymore. We don't have success story. We don't have people who have built anything. People who have created anything. We don't create anymore. Our children come out of school and all they look for is job, 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 job. Nobody is trained to come out from school and to think about creating, creating, creating. And until we begin to create, until we begin to be a people that creates and build like China, China have raised almost a hundred million billionaires. <clears throat> the government of China was deliberate about it that we would develop 100 billionaires. 
And until we become a nation that believes in our own people and are determined to develop our own and raise our own within our society, we will always run to other countries for greener pastors. We will always be beggars in another man's land. We will always queue at foreign embassy for visas. But I have a dream that in my lifetime, I will see a change one day. I don't know about you. It is not an empty wish. It's a fake declaration. I have a dream that one day I will see an African and a Ghana. That its citizens don't have to travel and leave the shores of Ghana for ends meet. But they can dwell in their own land, do well, prosper, flourish, and be accepted in their own nation. That young ladies who drive the best of cars, that is if they have put their money into investment and not just cars. Because if you are a young lady, you haven't bought a land, you haven't built, and you are driving a Mercedes, you don't know the value of money. You are an amateur. If you are trying to show an image and trying to be accepted by what you wear or by what you drive, you don't get it. Acceptance must not come by what you wear or what you drive. The difference between new money and old money is this. New money make noise, but old money is quiet. Old money don't make noise. But let them be in trouble. He will liquidate one or two investment and houses here and there take off the bill, wise new money is struggling to pay the mortgage. New money are into mortgage. Old money, they own it. You got something? And hear me, you can pray 24 hours a day. Money is not in the prayer equation. You can fast, but money is not in the fasting equation. You must acknowledge that you have something. So many people hearing me have buried their gifts. So many have buried great giftings. And they buried potential. What is potential? Potential simply means what you are capable of that you haven't yet become. Tell somebody, I got potential. Oh, come on, do it like me. Say, I got potential. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell somebody, yes, sir. Yeah. I got potential. I can make a difference. Tell somebody, I am somebody. Yes, sir. Tell somebody, I'm going somewhere. Tell somebody, don't look down on me. Don't look at me that way. Don't despise me because I got something. If you can see just a few years from now what is ahead of me, you will handle me differently. You will treat me differently. Come on, say yes. We can live in a country. We can live in the country that celebrates one another. Come with me to John 6, 9. John 6, 9. There is a man here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? You see, a little young boy, a lad, have two five, two loaves of bread. Two fish. And two fishes. Five loaves. Five loaves and two fish. To feed over 10,000 people. But look at me. He had five loaves, two fish, but didn't know what to do with it. Didn't know how to multiply what he has. If this young generation can trust the old generation with what they have, the old generation may not have 
what the young generation have. But if the young generation can trust the old generation, the old generation knows how to multiply what the young generation has. Somebody say, I hear you. Samson couldn't see. He had lost his vision and his sight. And he told the young lad, he said, lead me to the pillar. Lead me to the pillar. Just lead me to the pillar. I can't see. For he said, your young men shall see visions and the old men shall dream dreams. He said, young man, I don't see vision like before, but I can dream dreams. I, I don't see like you see, but I got power. He said, lead me to the rock, lead me to the pillar, lead me to the column, and leave me there. The young man could see, but didn't have the power to bring down the pillar. If the young generation will stop boasting and being arrogant because you can see what the old man can see and just work, work with the old generation, the old generation got power and strength you don't have to bring down the pillars, to bring down the strongholds of the enemy. If you can just use your gift and your vision to help the old generation and together the old and the new work together, we can do the impossible. Sit down for two minutes. When Mary, when Mary met Elizabeth, the angel said, Mary, you are about to carry a seed. And when you conceive inside of you, this thing that you are about to carry, you're going to need someone that is more anointed than you to help you understand and make sense of what you are carrying. And he said, Elizabeth, your cousin, who is of an old age, who everybody knows is barren, is six months pregnant. That means she's more pregnant than you. Hear me? If you want to go far in this life, eh, go with people who are more anointed than you. Go with those who know something you don't know. Come on, somebody say yes. yes. Sit down for two minutes. You know, I watch leaders. Any leader eh, that is surrounded with his peers, his age group of people, his peers, and they are all at the same level, is an unwise leader. They are not wise. You are not wise because none of them can look you in the eye and speak truth to power because you're of the same age. You need somebody wiser than you, somebody more anointed than you. When Mary met Elizabeth, she honored Elizabeth. When she honored Elizabeth, what Elizabeth was carrying connected to what Mary was carrying. Mary was carrying in her seed the next move of God. And Elizabeth was carrying in her one that would go ahead of what Mary was carrying to prepare the way for what Mary was carrying. What Mary was carrying was connected to what Elizabeth was carrying. What this new generation is carrying is connected to what the old generation is carrying. And if we work together and stop fighting one another, if the young generation will stop being arrogant and stop being prideful and stop thinking that you are the latest because you are trending if the young generation will realize that longevity has nothing to do with numbers or deep pocket or money or how much you are trending but longevity has everything to do with the understanding of where god has called you to and your contribution to the particular part of the body of christ you are called to it is not about how gifted you are how anointed or the numbers you have sit down for two minutes tell somebody you got something tell somebody else i have something i have something okay let me download it let me download this thing so i can pray with you and let you go home the young man didn't know what to do with what he has do you know how many young people today have so much and so little that can do so much and because they are amateurs the bible said there was a young rich ruler he was rich he was a ruler but he was a child and there are so many today rich have power they are governing rulers but are amateur 
They haven't matured. They haven't come of age. But they have money. They have numbers. They are rulers at the marketplace, in the church, on the political scene. Rulers who have riches but are children. Young, rich rulers. Second Kings 4 2. So Second. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Tell somebody you have something in your house. There's something. Else. Tell somebody you have something in your house. There's something. Yeah. She did not know that the answer to her problem was in her house. She went to the prophet and said, Prophet, I need some in Konya. Do something, prophet. And the prophet said, Girl, the answer to your problem is in your house. The solution to your situation and your circumstances is in your house. Tell somebody, you got something. You know, the other day, Moses, Moses was right by the Red Sea. He cried. He said, Lord, help. And the Lord said, what do you have in your hand? He said, a rod. He said, that is the answer. Strike the rod over the Red Sea and divide the Red Sea that the children of Israel may walk through the dry land. If you would just realize, every one of you seated here under the sound of my voice, that you got the answer. When I came on the scene, the belief at that time was to do anything in this country, you need help from outside. You need, you need money from outside. It was a mentality. And at the point I realized that it wasn't working. And I have to change that mentality to begin to believe God that everything I need was right here. And I didn't have to look for any church outside to bring me anything. That I can build anything God gives me to do. Because where there is vision, there is provision. Amen. And Bishop will tell you, we didn't give him a dime to do this. He had to learn to do it himself. Anytime he comes to me, I say, I ain't giving you nothing. Nobody gave me anything. I got to believe God to build from the scratch. And if you are anointed, prove it. Yeah. What you are seeing here is a statement and a proof that he's anointed. Somebody say, I hear you. Yes, sir. I say, son, don't come for me. Don't come to me for, I ain't giving you nothing. Ain't nobody give me anything. Why should I give you anything? Are you hearing me? Yeah. I said to my son, Joel, I said, listen, if you think God has called you, go out there and build your own ministry. And I sent him to Legon. I sent him out there. He started a church called, uh, what, what, what's the name? Firm Foundation. I said, go build. I left him out there for many years. I said, go build. If God called you, go build. And after many years, he said, Dad, you need to build the next generation. We call it the next gem church. That came from him. I said, let me see how that works. So he's been working with Bishop. I said, I ain't giving you my platform. I worked for 46 years to be my platform. You ain't coming to stand on my platform to speak because you're my son. Buddy, you got to get something on your own. Somebody say, talk to me, talk to me. Yes, sir, eh, I'm talking to you. The reason why when the fathers move, their legacy dies because the children are never trained to develop their own giftings. De develop your own and I will add some of mine to yours. Somebody say, I hear you. If you develop what you got, I'll give you something. The Bible said that Abraham gave all he had to Isaac, but to his servants, he gave them gifts. You can't have what I have unless you develop what you got. When you live here today, whoever you are, start recognizing what you got. That you got something. You can make a difference. You are a potential millionaire. 
you are unstoppable. Don't be afraid of people envious and jealous of you. Are you hearing me, somebody? I declare that anyone that wants your life will die before you. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Yes. Kadula Mahadas. Hey, let the angel of the Lord chase them and persecute them. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say amen. Amen. Sit down for a minute. Sit down for a minute. Let me show you a few things. Come with me to 1 Kings 17, 12 to 14. I give you about two scriptures and we're going to pray and go into the anointing service. As you is, said. Is anybody learning something? Yeah. Amen. You see, I have preached all kinds of messages. But I think that one of the things that is blocking you and I is our mentality. We need to renew our mind. We need to think differently and see differently. For as a man thinketh, so he is. I want you to think differently. I want you to be a generational thinker. I want you to begin to see the possibilities of the future. Somebody say, I have a dream. Oh, come on, say it with some confidence. Say, I have a dream. That in my lifetime, I will see a different Ghana. A Ghana that celebrates and loves his own. A Ghana that supports his own. Not a Ghana that kills and destroys his own. Not a Ghana that is jealous and envious of his own. Not a Ghana when the winner takes it all. But a Ghana that recognizes that there might be people in opposition that have something that we need. And as long as they can contribute something for the good of country, we must let them come in like President Kufour did to Kwesindu of CPP. He allowed them to come in and say, Kwesi, you have something for Ghana. We need it. Come, join us. Let's build a country for the good of all. And until we come to that place, until we come to that place where we recognize the giftings, the abilities of others and open the doors for them to all come in and we build together for the sake of our children, our grandchildren, we will never be celebrated and remembered by history. I don't know how you want to be remembered, but I want it to be that when they talk about the men and the women that lived, in my time, in the history of this country, that history will treat me fairly. Yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah. Look at it, first, first Kings 17, 12 to 14, quickly. And she said, as the Lord God thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but, a hand, I have not a cake, mm -hmm. but a handful of meal in a barrel. a handful, yeah. Hear me, you don't need much. Tell someone, you don't need much. With God, you can make a difference with so little. Are you hearing me? With God, you can do so much, accomplish so much with the little you think you have. I'm telling you. Go ahead. And a little oil in a cruise. Say a little, a little, a little, a little. Tell somebody, all you need is just a little, just a little. Yeah, a little, a little, a little. A little faith like a what? A master seed. A little. Just that little can do much with God. You need more of God. With a little, you can make a difference. Stop looking. You know what God told Abraham? When Lot departed from Abraham, and the word Lot means a veil, a veil. He was veiled. He couldn't see. And God said, I'm not going to talk to you because you, you don't see. You can't see because you are veiled by Lot. And the Bible said that when Lot departed from him, then the Lord said, Abraham, rise up, lift up your eyes, see, look from where thou art. Tell somebody from where you are, from where you are. Right from where you are. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go to Europe. Now we travel to North America. 
nurses. I know, I know there is a demand for your gift. Then I know it's tough here, doctors. But you know something? I understand why you want to go out there. But country needs you. Country needs you. Let there not be a day in the history of this country where our hospitals are empty. Because our nurses and our doctors have all gone out there for greener pastors. Let's build a country where our hospitals will not just be buildings and equipment, but will have skillful men and women who love country and care about people. I know it's tough because I'm a Ghana, I live here too. The other day, I gave money for food, and after a few days, my cook came, he wanted more money. I almost said, And my daughter said, Dad, things are tough. Prices have tripled. Everything is expensive. Say later. With God. Can't do much. Finish now. I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son. Uh -huh. That we may eat it and die. Uh -huh. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me the, thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. After that, make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Tell somebody you got something. She thought she had nothing and all she had was her last meal and she would eat and die and the prophet said you got something girl and the prophet said so out of what you got the prophet said don't be selfish don't think about yourself do something for the good of others with what you have and you will always have in abundance sometimes we hold back we hold on to what we have we are thinking about security and self-preservation. But the prophet said, don't think about yourself. If you think about yourself, you're going to die. But if you make available what you have for the use of the work of God and others, abundance will come out of what you have. Tell somebody you got something. Let me give you one more scripture. And I feel like the oil is lifted. And let me close. Genesis 21. 15 to 19 and the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs and she went and sat her down over against him uh -huh. a good way off as it were a bow shot yes sir for she said let me not see the death of the child uh -huh. and she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept and God heard the voice of the lad. Who cried? Who cried? It was the mother that cried. But God heard the cry of the child. You know why? Because the mother didn't have a covenant with God. But the father of the child had a covenant with God. And because the, the child's father had a covenant with God, when the mother cried, God heard the cry of the child. Are you hearing me, somebody? Go ahead and see what happened. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven mm -hmm. and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not. Mm -hmm. Hagar, fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Where he is. Tell somebody where you are. Tell somebody a lot can happen from where you are. Just from where you are. You don't have to go anywhere. Just where you are. Listen, it's not about traveling. No. I have seen people, I have siblings, and I've seen people out of this country 40 years, 30 years, 25 years, and more. I travel, I see them all the time. They have nothing. 
They have European passport and American passport and nothing. Because I'm a citizen, I'm a citizen, I'm a citizen. They speak slang and the Queen's English with nothing. See, I hear you. Go ahead. Arise, lift up the lad, and behold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Uh -huh. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She saw what? A well of water. Where? Where was the well of water? In the desert. Where? Right where she was. Tell somebody that is a well of water right where you are. Yeah, breakthroughs right where you are. You know what the problem is? Jesus says, eyes have they, but they see not. I pray today for illumination. I pray for revelation. I pray that God will open your eyes to see what you are not seeing. All around you, there are possibilities.